Okay, everybody, I think we're, uh, we're running here. Um, I find that uh, while it's setting up my Facebook to run, uh, yeah, we're live, streaming live on Facebook. Yeah, okay, that's good. All righty, hello, everybody. This is Alex. This is our little casual Monday show. Let me do this. There we go. I'm, I, now I'm all brightened up here. Isn't that sweet? Anyway, uh, oh, we got a whole bunch of people waiting to come on here. So let's just do this and uh, not tarry. Okay, here we go. Who's coming up? Uh, Rick's coming up. Hello, Rick. Hello, Edward. Hello, oh, yeah. Mike. Hello, Andrew. Hello, Lenla Frisco. That's a good beginning for today. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Wow, more people coming. Hold on a second. Admit all. All right. There we go. Here comes Steve Bender, and here comes Scott Boddicker. Uh, and uh, you know what I had before I came on the air? I haven't had this in a long time. Ask reflux. You. <laughs> yeah, I know. You. I, I, <laughs> I don't think I've had a bad acid reflux come up in years. So uh, who knows? So it's because we have this effect on you? Is that just before I yeah. <laughs> it does this effect on me? Um, and, uh, uh, whatever. So how y'all doing? How's the how's the week gone so far? It's only Monday. It's only Monday. <laughs> yeah. Now you you don't go out much, do you, Shaq? I don't think I've been out of the house in a week. <laughs> you really? Where am I going? I don't know. I took a walk. Two days ago, you know, but no matter what I do, I can't seem to be, I seem to be gaining weight and I can't seem to lose it. And I'm not eating, I'm eat low carb, not blowing a diet or anything. And I just, I'm just continue to gain and I can't figure it out. Well, and use Marjorie's exercise bike or whatever the hell she bought. <laughs> I can't eat. Well, she goes here, here she comes out. She goes, shh. Uh, no, she, <laughs> we were just talking about you, Marjorie. What'd you say? No, you, uh, tell him what you said, Jackie. I said, Alex is complaining about his weight <clears throat> for a change. And I said, use Mar <laughs> Marjorie's exercise bike or whatever she bought in the last six months. Yeah. You know, don't yeah. go on it. Well, you it's haven't gone not on not wide it. enough for him. No, <laughs> 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 True. That's oh, what you said. It's too fat. <laughs> <laughs> he said that to me. It doesn't suck. No, not the seat is the seat is uncomfortable. We put a fucking towel on it. <laughs> put a fucking towel on it. <laughs> it's a twenty five hundred dollar bike. I expect it to do it for me. Put a mm -hmm. pillow under it. Yeah, put a pillow <laughs> under it. Anyway. Yeah, yeah. She, uh, she goes, get on the bike. That's when you, how you'll lose. Get on the bike. When's the last time you were on the bike, Marjorie? I have an issue with the ah, broken toe. A what? Broken toe. Uh, and you, that means you can't use the bike. When I put pressure down on my toes, it hurts. Maybe maybe call a tow truck. No. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, you know, you should be doing this show, Andrew. Why me? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. But no, it's, uh, it. Uh, you know, she tells me, do the bike, do the bike. She hasn't done the bike in weeks. And she's talking. I have a broken toe. She's talking about going to her $2,500 a year gym again. And I said, you bought a $2,500 bike that should make it so you don't have to go to the $2,500 a year gym. <laughs> Am I right? I'm not well, getting to that. around your massive apartment if you don't want to get on the bike. If what did you say? I said jog around your massive apartment. I walk around the apartment all day long. Jog. Yeah, I go on. also we find we're spending a lot of time lying in bed watching TV. <laughs> well, not me as much as her. I mean, she, <laughs> she, she, I mean, I'm usually in here doing something. No, she, you're not. She's in there binge watching some <laughs> Czechoslovakian soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> well, today I have a look to get Master Chef Asia. Oh, geez, That's, that that could be good. I only like Master Chef UK. It's only like fifteen Master episodes. Chef. 
Master Chef professional is what you like. Professional, when, you can. When you, when you finish you watching do it, do you feel like watching it again? Master Chef. <laughs> I do. I do. Andrew, I do. Is it coming up today? Is that will be on? No, it's already over, but it's on um, Gimme Peers or whatever. It's, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I'll check it. I want to watch. Uh, do they do Chinese food? Yeah. Well, oh, over there, it's just called food. Yeah, but I, I, I <laughs> Does it come with MSG? Yeah, it's just, called, it's just called food up there, folks. <laughs> oh, man. You guys are great. Yeah. Hey, speaking of binge watching, my wife and I just went through Yellowstone. Has anybody else gone through that down that? Uh, that oh, little yeah. Rabbit? Holy yeah. shit, what a great show. Really? Yeah. I, I started watching the first episode, and uh, uh, I, yeah, I didn't get me. There's, it grabbed me. There's okay. some great, great stuff they do on that show. Really really well done what do you mean really well done there's i mean the from a drama and from a suspense and some of the stuff that goes on they really they really get you i think it's really well done yeah we watched this new show the nevers i how just started how was that that's the joss whedon show right yeah the i haven't seen it yet uh it's i i'm gonna have to give it a couple more episodes i think it's yeah a, it's, it's interesting it's, 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 the, it, it's the 18th century which i love historical dramas with the clothing with a hint of uh what would you say alex supernatural supernatural <laughs> well yes yeah, it, they're 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 all oh look look who's in your car wait a minute hold on a second Let's birthday. Oh, happy car. birthday mandy i'm happy out of here bitches <laughs> I, I was like, peace out i'm Thank gonna go on my call on your what? Because I had to say, oh, I cannot wait to announce that I got my vaccination Friday. My Good. first one. Hey. Good for you. So I feel like I don't have as much FOMO anymore. What, what, <laughs> kind, what kind did you get? I got Moderna. Moderna. Good. Yeah. We're yeah. team Moderna over here. Team yeah. Moderna. I got my second. Boy, least, how many oh team my Moderna God. here? How many Modernas here? Yeah, okay. there you go. How many, how many um, of, of the uh, um, Pfizer? Pfizer. Pfizer's? How many Pfizer's here? Okay. Uh, and talcum powder. I mean, my arm Wait is still the second one. Wait till the second one. Second Great. one. Second one. You may get some reaction to it. Marjorie. Some little, reaction. Mar no, I felt yeah. crappy Saturday. I felt I couldn't get out of bed until two o'clock. <laughs> oh, really? I had so, no reaction to either. Either one no. for one or two. Nothing. No. Zero. I, I had my arm was sore and a little little malaise, but that was about it. You know. Yeah, well that's what I mean. It was just like I didn't feel like getting up. I was just okay. like, well, I was unconscious. I'll show the picture that Alex took. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there is a picture that I took. I wish I could put it up here, but I had to go. Here, I'm it. putting it here. Okay, I'll put it up. Uh, put it down. Now move it down. We got to see. <laughs> it, 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 <laughs> you really see your mouth. There she that's is. That's it. That's that's wait, wait, leave it up. I have to scroll over. Yeah, that, that should, was me the day after. You know what? That should be, that should be your Facebook profile photo. <laughs> the day after. <laughs> yeah, Mandy, did you know you're born on the same day as David Letterman? I do. Yeah, <laughs> I, I was gonna say that him and David Cassidy. Yeah. So, you know, uh, but uh, I, when I used to watch Letterman, it was so funny because. Every year on his birthday, he would be like, it's my birthday. He always talked about how it was his birthday. And I would be like, yay, birthday twins. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but my question is, uh, where are you, are you Are you at work today or just? Uh... I just left. I'm, I'm out of here. I, I don't, I just like, I still don't feel very well. If that makes any sense. I just said, I'm going to lay down. Lay down. I just from, yeah, I just told my yeah. boss, I said, I don't feel good. I'm going home. She's like, okay, happy birthday. I'll tell you what, we, what I don't know about Shecky and a lot of these people have already had their shots. Everybody here has had a shot, haven't they? Fed two. Yeah. Yeah. You've had and and uh, how many have had the full course? Oh, so everybody's pretty much, you know, except, except for a Canadian. Mandy, Mandy's still got to have one more. Yeah. Uh, uh, but how many of you still? You go out. You still wear a mask? Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. You still stay stay distant from somebody else? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. In spite of the fact, the only thing that you don't have is fear, you know, like maybe I'll get right. it out here, you know. No, I go into Costco and I completely forget 
I'm supposed to be six feet from someone. It's, well, yeah. But then it's all Asians on their telephones. <laughs> but you have a mask, don't you? Rick, do you wear a mask? Yes. yes. Oh, yeah. You have to wear a mask if you go into Costco. Yeah. yeah. We have oh, a no, mask. absolutely. But I do forget when I'm in the store yeah. that theoretically you're supposed to be, you know, yeah. six feet away. But uh, I don't know if you are six feet. If, if at Costco it's that difficult to be six feet from someone. Well, now they're saying three feet for children. Yeah. yeah. Uh, yes, Andrew. Yeah. You know, I want to tell you a story. So I, I went to CVS to get my second dose and got up and turned around to say thank you to the nurse. Mm -hmm. Some guy with a rebel flag on his shirt went, you should be thanking Trump. Oh, and I, oh my <laughs> God. I, and I said, <laughs> if you want the Trump vaccine, you're, you're in the wrong line, sir. What? <laughs> so, well, but, you know, Pfizer and Moderna started this tech 10 years ago trying to figure it out. And this is the Pfizer vaccine. <laughs> took no money from the federal government. Right. So if you want the Trump vaccine, get out of line and go to another pharmacy. This one isn't it. No, go to the disinfectant aisle. Yeah. Well, I, I wasn't going to go there. I, I how did, and how do you react to that? He grunted and, and didn't say anything back. And then I turned to walk and when I got to the front of the store, two women stopped me and said, I never have my phone on video in time. And I said, thank you for not having your phone on video. <laughs> See, I, I was supposed to thank Trump for my 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 uh, my vaccine. vaccine. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Are you still there, Mandy? I think we may have lost her. Uh, she, uh, uh, she, oh, there, there, she is. there she is again. Yeah. Yeah. We never see, the, see her with this much sun on her face. <laughs> Are you a passenger? No, she's, she's driving, she's driving, she's driving she's right? Driving. Oh, the way the phone looked, it looked like she was. <laughs> yeah, it looks like her hands are free. <laughs> yeah. Andy, are you driving? Are you? Are you I hope. Are you, I, <laughs> I don't. Maybe she can't. Whatever. But anyway, let's, pre let's pretend. Let's pretend we're her. We'll, we can pretend we're her GPS. Mandy, yes. turn <laughs> left. <Yes. laughs> Come on, guys. Don't distract to us. I bad. got one of the first uh, GPSs ever in a car, built into a car. It was an accident. Yeah. And I swear to you, the voice was Japanese. <laughs> yeah. We called her Yoko. <laughs> we gave her a name. And, uh, you know, she goes, you may turn left now. You know? <laughs> Do you remember you know the time when, they, when, they Alex, when the thing took us right up to the farmhouse? Oh, oh, we, oh, we were in France. Europe. We were in Europe and we were in France. It, it, no, we were in, uh, we were in Italy. Italy. And the, it's giving him instructions and we're lefting when they said left and right, and right. All of a sudden, we're driving up to a farmhouse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it, it was just, you know, nothing else either way, you know. Yeah. We figured maybe. We figure it out. Maybe the farmer <laughs> had programmed it that way. <laughs> Anyway, can can you hear us, Mandy? Not really. Oh, I had to call um, my own phone to let myself in because I didn't have my key fob. But that was uh, my commute. That's how long my commute is. Wow. wow. I'm already home. <laughs> wow. Good for you. Wow. But I'm trying to figure out how to. What am I doing? Where's the sound? Just hold it. Just hold it. Just go in. Yeah. Did you go the handle. <laughs> yeah, sure. And open the door. I can hear you, but it's just not loud. Oh, so you had to open the door to your house? The gate. The gate. Oh, oh, oh you're yeah. in a gate, gate to my apartment. Whoa. She's in a gate. I know. Woo. <laughs> <laughs> it's very <laughs> common around here for apartments to be gated because of the riffraff. Really? <laughs> Get rid of the riff and also the raft. I want to know how to hear. What? <laughs> what? Can't hear us well. You can't hear us. Turn yeah. off the volume. <laughs> <laughs> we can shout at her. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna go. I just wanted to say hello. Oh, Pop on and just brag about how I got a vaccination. Well, we're we're so happy. Uh, have, got it. have a great birthday, Mandy. Yeah. yeah. Have a great birthday, birthday Mandy. Too. Happy birthday. When's Thank your birthday? You. Today or tomorrow or today. 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 Okay. Bye -bye. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy <laughs> birthday, dear Mandy. Happy birthday to you. 
And I can pay those two old ladies money for using their song. Well, not anymore. <laughs> of course, no, it's, 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 it's a public it. domain now. Yeah. yeah. Is it? Oh, OK. Yeah. Yeah, it is not, public domain. Then I'm not going to get flagged by YouTube about using non copyrighted. <laughs> yeah, really. It's my son's birthday today, too. Oh, oh good. Cool. Really? How old? 33. Wow. wow. <laughs> yeah, Alex, the next thing you're going to be doing is sending the, singing the letters song again. From, okay. uh, right. Remember right. Right. I, anyway, I, Andy, have a nice rest of the day and happy birthday. Thank you. you know. happy birthday. I, know I got to teach a class, and I, like I said, I still don't feel very good, so I need to go home. I'm resting up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I have to do some cardio later. Oh, wow. <laughs> bye, y'all. Okay, bye. 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 Marjorie does cardio, and look how young she looks for it. <laughs> um, yeah, well, no, you know, I mean, they're all broad, she ain't bad, you know. <laughs> Is using the term broad now, would that uh, make me oh. have to leave office as governor? Of course. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No question. That, that assumes you could get elected governor. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to rerun. Well, at least, yeah. you know, at least he, they, they don't have a thing here that they have in California. Hey, they have marijuana, Alex. Yeah, I know, but, he, but they don't, he don't have a thing here, luckily, that they have in California, which is recalling, which is just... Isn't that upset. what they're doing to Gavin Newsom? Yeah. yeah. Yes, it yeah. is. Yeah, you'll, you'll exactly. be talking to Governor Caitlyn Jenner soon. Oh, my God. <laughs> Caitlyn Jenner is saying, is she... Okay, yeah. <laughs> running for office. running for governor mm -hmm. that, that's the thought and and you know what happened what happened the last time could happen this time and that yep. is in a recall anybody can run you can have they had 36 candidates if i remember correct that's but right who, who won the one who was the best known not yep. qualified or anything else just best known i mean yep. Hell, a, stri a stripper came in third. A porn actress came in third. Okay. But Arnold Schwarzenegger won that. And you don't have to win it by, you know, any percentage. You just have to be the highest winner. Yep. So you can come up with, uh, you can come up with Caitlyn Jenner as governor, you know. Yep, absolutely. We had Cynthia Nixon run, right? Well, first, yeah. first they've got. I liked her, actually. First they've got to recall Gavin Newsom. Okay, uh, and I think that's going to be a little bit hard to do. I don't think the state really wants to go through another recall. You know, they remember <laughs> the, the last one didn't work out too well for them. Schwarzenegger wasn't terrible, but he really wasn't very good. Well, Who was the governor before him, Alex? Hmm? Gray Who was the governor Gray before Davis. him? Before him? Gray Davis. Gray Davis. Gray Davis. Gray Davis. Yeah. He was the guy that got recalled. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, and then uh, then uh, you know now you have Newsom, but you had uh, you had uh, Jerry Brown, right? Quite a while. He, he Jerry Brown came in after Schwarzenegger, didn't he? Correct. I think so. Oh. Yeah, it's the second time, by the way, that Jerry Brown's been governor. Right. Yep. And uh, yeah, but uh, our, our governor, I think he's he's just holding firm. He's not going anywhere. They're going to. He have may to rerun. His fans love him. Well, I don't know if he he should rerun now. Yeah. At first, I thought no, but it's it really seems like it's gone away as of yeah. now. Well, Except I, in the New York Post. I'll, right. I'll, <laughs> tell, you, I'll tell you what, what Cuomo has done, which is smart, which a, a lot of the other people who have been in the same kind of position uh, have simply given up, like uh, Al Franken. Was a good example. I mean, how how gave up too soon? What a nothing burger the, the Franken thing was. Yeah, but, but he had the whole party against him, huh? He had the whole party against it was him. Too early. He was supposed to go. Oh, to I agree. Party. I agree totally. Yeah. But but everyone ganged up on him, and even Bernie Sanders was against him. So it's wow. ridiculous, ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, uh, um, uh, he, 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 uh, Franken should have never given up, and if you don't give up it'll probably go away. And I think what's happening with Cuomo is he's just going about doing his job every day. And uh, as the days pass, people begin to kind of get used to the idea that he's still there in spite of all of this. So, 
I mean, there is an investigation going on, right? And if, yes. that, yeah. if, that, if that comes out with ho more horrible shit than we've heard, then he's in trouble. But I don't think it will. I think it'll be exactly what we've heard, which is worst nothing. Thing about I him think, right I think is the nursing situation. That's the worst thing. That's worse than the girls. Looking down a girl's shirt. Yeah. 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 Well, well, that, actually, the I, worst, is, it, you know? is it the girls, uh, the, the women, shall we say, not women, uh, uh, is the women complaining that's being investigated or the nursing home scandal? Both. I think the nursing home is worse. Obviously, killing people is worse than looking down. <laughs> that's a no-brainer. Yeah, well, he, he's not really accused of killing anybody in the process. He's killed of underestimating the amount of deaths. Well, he brought them back into the nursing homes. Uh, well, but those that wasn't what he's been accused of. He's been accused of under-reporting well, deaths among yeah. nursing home patients. Uh, and uh, what the argument that he has is they did not report those nursing home patients that were then moved to a hospital and died. Okay, because the hospitals reported those as deaths. But yes. some of them returned, Alex. They returned. Right. Yeah, but, but they were not infectious. Look, the guy was too busy writing a book heralding himself for what a good job he was doing. <laughs> Four million dollars for the book. He got, what, seven million, something like that. Four million. Four million for the book? Not bad. Would you read that book? I read that book. <laughs> I'd like to meet the publisher. Really? Here, here's four million dollars for a I'd book like nobody to, wants I'd to I'd like read. to meet the person who bought it. <laughs> yeah. Really? Who would buy that while we were living through this? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I guess, you know, I mean, uh, I mean... You were as into him as anybody, right? You were watching it every morning and talking about it, but you wouldn't buy the book. Well, it's yeah, like, it would have been okay if he had written, well, we decided to take these people out of the hospital and put them into a nursing home, and then I looked down a woman's dress. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he gets removed, you know, I hear Matt Gates is looking for work. So. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> you know, if he wrote the book like Penthouse Forum... Big seller. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he, should, he could have written an op-ed in the Times, and that would have been enough. Yeah. Exactly. I think that the uh, the uh, investigation is going to say that none of these women were, uh, were... It's a question as to whether you get bothered by something like that. But also, they all remember this 10 years later. Yeah. Uh, I mean, if you came into work at the Capitol, Marjorie, you're a woman... And uh, and and Cuomo looked at you and said, "Oh, you look great today." Which is what some of these people are just complaining about. <laughs> thank you. Huh? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Right. Yeah. Either thank you or I don't appreciate that. And please don't talk to me like that. <laughs> one, one or the other. Right. I mean, it's not that hard. <laughs> well, let's say he made an approach to you. you know, I would handle it. You're a big girl. You yeah. Not yeah, feeling I... you up, feeling you out. <laughs> feeling you <laughs> up, Alex. You wouldn't get that far feeling me out. Why? Because he wouldn't be touching my body. No, I'm talking about feeling you out. In other words, trying to say, oh, you know, are you interested if you might be in interested possibly dating you? In dating you. You wouldn't mind that, would you? Well, I actually find him sexy. Okay. So, <laughs> I mean, there's. So, I mean, yeah. There's the difference. Oh, who do we lose? Len. Len. No? No, there was one. Yeah, it's Len. Mandy. Well, we lost Len. Mandy. We lost there's there's Len. There's Len. Len's coming. The video's going on and off. Yeah, yeah. what's going on over here? Yeah. Yeah, no, there was another person here, wasn't there? It was Mandy, but she's gone. Oh, I know Mandy's gone. We only had three on the bottom row. Oh, really? We had three on the bottom row. Now we only have one on the bottom row. We have two here. Two. So who do we lose? Who do we lose? Who do we lose? Oh, there's 10 of us here. I don't think everybody sees the rows in the same there's way. Eight, there's 10. No. I think I'm, you're right. Here yeah. I've got uh, here I've got 10 too. Yeah. I have Marjorie and Charlie on the bottom. Yeah, yeah it's different. And I have uh, and... It depends on how big you've made your screen. So uh, anyway, um, but uh, you know, I mean, I just I just died. I if, if I I would vote for him again if he ran. Because I, I would. It's Shecky. I was talking to Shecky about this yesterday. And really, when you think about it, who is there? You know? Right. If there was someone great who was primarying him, 
you would consider it, wouldn't you? I mean, I would never vote for a Republican against it. Consider it, but I don't. I can't think of anybody that would think of running. I mean, what the Blasio is thinking of running? Yeah, no, he's not. Vote, no, if, no, he is, if, yeah. if there isn't a Cuomo in, in the in the mix, no, he, De Blasio he, always said he's going to run for governor because he wants money from supporters. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I believe it. I, I, oh, at a primary, the Blasio and Cuomo, I'm going with Cuomo. Right. I would go with Cuomo. Yeah. I think if Cuomo runs, he'll win. You know? Yeah, I agree. Yeah. yeah. And I want him to run. Now, Andrew is in, uh, where are you again? You're in Cleveland. Cleveland, Ohio. Okay. I was going to say, um, I, somehow I thought Michigan for a second. It's up the road. Yeah. Michigan the really lake. got problems with That's COVID. Awful. Awful. Just awful. Yeah. I mean, it, no one was wearing masks anywhere. Huh? Yeah. Everyone was defying yeah, the governor the, and the Republican legislature masks. shut down everything that, that uh, the governor was trying to do. Yeah. yeah. Good. And then they'll try and impeach her. You know. Well, they already so tried to kill her. her. <laughs> they already another, tried to abduct and execute her. You know, Another uh, person in my network who's pro pro Trump still thinks the election was stolen. The virus is a hoax. Son just got diagnosed, and she's sick as hell. Hasn't been diagnosed, but she she had no say, sense of taste or smell, and is saying she's not sure she has COVID. Well, she voted for oh. Trump, so she had no taste. That she started <laughs> out with that one. Yeah, or or taste <laughs> in the wrong wrong uh, orifice. We just, yeah. we just lost a friend who. We were shocked, says he won't get vaxxed. I'm like, well, you know, what do you do? I can't deal with it. I just like, well, you're an idiot. Yeah. Yeah. Wait a minute. You lost them? Well, I, you know, like, how can I be friends with someone? Oh, I'm saying, I thought you lost them. Yeah. But he's still oh. alive, right? No, he's still alive. Yeah. You, when you say <laughs> I lost, we lost him these days. That's it, what it, I thought. No, 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 but I, I don't want to see him. To me. I don't want to see him. You know, it's, it's, well, it's Jackie, just, Jackie has a business partner. He still will not get vaccinated. Jesus. Why? He's waiting for the Johnson and Johnson vaccine in Los Angeles. I have one friend same way. Won't get vaccinated until he can get the Johnson because he heard that Pfizer and Moderna change your DNA. That's what he says. Yeah. yeah. But he's not that's exactly what he says. And and it's already been proven that that whole that whole thing came from one of these foreign bots that created a <laughs> Yeah. And no But my partner spends all day watching Fox, OAN, and the other oh, one. God. So that's where what's he gets it from. What's but, it, but why will he get J? Uh, but at least he'll get J&J, right? He does believe that. Well, yeah. Johnston and Johnston doesn't, quote, fuck with your DNA. OK. Yeah. But but it, I don't but, give a shit how stupid you are. Just get vaxxed. It's got, yeah, baby, yeah, it's yeah. got yeah. Like dead baby stem cells in. But my other friends who are just as ultra conservative have gotten vaccinated. Yeah. So you explain it. Yeah. This should not be a political issue. And which one did Trump get? It was the Moderna, wasn't it? I don't know. Yeah, he it was I think it was the Moderna that he got the day before we finally got his. So well, you know, Fox yeah. was doing a lot that we watched uh, what happened was we were gonna watch John Oliver's show from last night, but somehow HBO Max says, okay, this is last night's show, and we put it on. It was a show from last year. Okay. I watched it this morning. It's on. Oh uh, well, it's not on ours. It well, it, we ended up finding. We it. went two places where it said the twelfth, and we put on that episode, and it was like an episode from last year, and it was about COVID, and we couldn't remember seeing it, but we did, I'm sure. And sure. it talked about Fox, and how all this misinformation has been put across on Fox about how you know how uh, hydrochloroquine would work and blah 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 blah. And you know this is going to go away, and yet in the meantime they let all their people work from home, mm -hmm. you know, <laughs> and 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 uh, gave them sick days if they came down. I mean, it, it was it was this duplicity of 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 the company itself. And then they mentioned, I think it was Doctor Phil, who <laughs> said, "Oh, hey, this isn't as bad. There are three hundred and fifty thousand deaths because of, of swimming pools." Oh yeah, a year. Yeah, oh, yeah, and it turns out John Oliver did the research. There were only four thousand deaths. Mm -hmm. Okay, but he said three hundred fifty thousand deaths, and that's how these things, these rumors, get spread 
by these so-called uh, reliable sources. Which is, which is bullshit because- By the way, out of that 3,000, a lot of them are evangelical baptisms gone wrong. <laughs> a lot of them, yeah. <laughs> but, Speaking of Fox, I mean, the misinformation it... that has been put across, and these people are going, okay, yes, it's going to screw with my DNA. Unbelievable. Uh, that's not the reason you're a mouth breather, pal. <laughs> you know. Um, but uh, how is it in your part of the country there, Scott Boddicker, in, uh, in Snapple land? It's, it's just fine. I mean, I don't. I go out, I've been out three times today already. I went to the gym, I went to church, I went to uh, Sam's Warehouse. I mean, did you I get out, I don't care. And did you wear a mask in these places? Oh yeah, I wear a mask and I've been okay. shot and vaccinated. Because you don't have places. to in Texas. You can go in. No, I don't have to, but well, you have to, to do have going to, to Sam's, the I think, Well, they, the store itself can say, in spite yeah, of the yeah. fact of whatever the government but, thinks. But, yeah. but the gym I go to is, uh, Kind of governmental. It's a it's the city's park and rec, mm -hmm. and no mask required. But a lot of really? wearing one. Well, not not everybody, but you know, I'd say eighty percent, ninety percent. Did you wear one at the gym? Did what? you wear one in the gym? Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. So, I would. And, and it's interesting because you've had both shots. You're pretty well clear of being able to get it, and yet you still wear the mask because. Everybody, it's not, we're not, uh, we haven't achieved herd immunity, and this is the right. way we're going to achieve it. Right. I don't and want to get the flu. And, and if you've had the second shot, um, you may not die or be in intensive care, but you could still come down with it. Sure, yes. Or, or you could maybe be a, a, get it and be asymptomatic. And that's even worse because then you're spreading it to everybody else. Right. I think also at this point in time, just for symbolic value, and it's more than that, obviously, but you should wear a mask because the more people see people out there without masks, Absolutely. the more they're going to think, I don't need to wear a mask. Exactly. Right. Wear your mask. Right. It's respect. Yes, absolutely. I mean, I, look, I'm, I've gotten to the point now where I go out for walks more lately than I have in a while. And uh, I put on a mask. And I hate walking with a mask on. It's horrible. It's just it is. Uh, you breathe heavier. It's it's. My it's, nose runs. Well, it's you can just fun. do this. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Get a wet <laughs> mask it, it, when it, I get it, home. You come back and you have to change the mask. Uh, but it you know what I'm saying? It. I don't like doing that either. But you do it. You, you know. Do it. You just do it. And I've had both shots. So I don't need to do it. You know, I, I think my chances are about only about 5% that I would come down with anything. And then if I did, it wouldn't be very bad. But that's not the reason why I'm wearing a mask now. I'm wearing a mask because it, it's a way of saying to the rest of the world, hey, you wear a mask too. Absolutely. You know, and I have this, this habit I do, where whenever I walk past somebody who's not wearing a mask, I put my hand over my mask, <laughs> and double masking myself. And hoping that they will get the hint. Do you know how many have gotten the hint? Zero. <laughs> One. Oh, whoa. One. I walked past and I went, mm, and the guy went, oh, and he had a mask and he pulled it up. But that was it. Only one. The rest, <laughs> nobody else seems to know what I'm trying to tell them. <laughs> on, on Saturday, I put my kayak in the river for the first time this year. And when we were unloading and loading, we had the masks on. By the way, that's not a euphemism. People, it is. It is. <laughs> The other part the and people were, were ridiculing us because we had masks on yeah and i said uh laugh all you want it's not it's not affecting you is it is my mask hurting you and mm -hmm. that was the end of it you yeah. get in the river and you're out where there's you nobody to make a lot of trouble wherever you go i do yeah, <laughs> yeah. you know i think that's pretty much a given yeah 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 but i mean i mean uh um i did it's just i just it's just right to wear a mask you know and people go, well, it's not, uh, you know, I, I, I'm not going to get COVID. I'm, I, I'm healthy. Yeah, but you're healthy until you get COVID. Yeah. <laughs> More. And what's happening now, I can't say that I'm unhappy for this, is the kids are getting it. Right. You know, uh, and, and, and you go, well, that's cruel, Alex. Why? Because they were so, you know, they go out and they do the spring bait break shit 
and they think, and then they go back and infect grandma. They can go fuck themselves. I don't care if kids <laughs> get it. I hope they get it. I hope they suddenly <laughs> say, I better wear a mask. You know? The biggest state is Michigan right now. Right, right. I know. But and you, do you know what state now has the lowest infection, uh, the lowest positivity rate? California. 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 They, were, they ran out of people to get it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're right, Andrew. <laughs> but I was surprised to hear that the other day because at one point, weren't they the highest? Yeah. Oh, yeah. We don't have anybody here from California right now. Yeah, you do. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, who? Len, me. Len. Oh, Len. Oh, yeah, of course. <laughs> So, I mean, you've got the lowest infection rate. Yep. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. a lot of this, uh, you know, I don't, I don't, it's going down and down. But the fact that Newsom is getting recalled has also made him open stuff up that I don't think he was going to open up for a while. Well, you, know, just, they, you know, what they said about Cuomo, one more sexual, um, uh, <laughs> what do you call it, accusation. And he's going to open up the restaurants to 125% occupancy. <laughs> He did marijuana instead. <laughs> but you saw, he also again, yesterday or today said, you still have to buy food to buy a drink in a bar or restaurant. That's, so well, that's always been the case, Jackie. You and I were arguing about this in our private call. And the fact is that I heard that here in New York, you always had to. That was always part of the liquor being sold. Every no. place, every establishment that sold liquor but you, no? you didn't have to buy a meal or a right. you didn't have to, but they something. had to serve food of some uh, sort, so they had right. But now you, you have to buy food to have them serve you a drink. Oh, okay. I mean, for example, Alex. I mean, the Village Vanguard has never served food, but I go there and have a martini and listen to a set of jazz. There's no, no, they don't have to serve food, but now they're kind of screwed with this these policies. Oh. It's weird. Most liquor licenses require you have something, a snack or otherwise available yes. for sale. Yeah, we, 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 we can't get a we, peanut we, in that place. The, yeah, yeah, we well, they put out the free pretzels or the free whatever. You yeah, know, we, went, we went to a place and they made us buy uh, for a dollar a celery and carrot plate, you know, just so that we had food. Yeah. Okay. Right. They've been doing that during the pandemic, but I, they yeah. never did that before. Not before that, though. Uh, Not before that. Oh, you know, okay. I would go to Hurley's down at, you know, below yeah, 30 yeah, Rock right. and sit at the bar and order, you know, can I have but a vodka on the rocks? Right. They there. never pressured you to eat. Was some kind of they food available at Hurley's, Hurley's, though? What? Was some kind of food available at Hurley's? Oh, yeah. They, they have the best baked clams in the world. Oh, really? oh that sounds so good. <laughs> sounds good. <laughs> and they moved to 48th Street and they still have great baked clams. Mm. 48th and where? Between um, 8th and Broadway. Mm. Oh. But they used to be... I, not a neighborhood I associate with great food, but I'll go. Get a, get a, <laughs> no, they, you, know, you know the story about Hurley's. They were on the corner of 50th and 6th, and when they were building 30 Rock, they wouldn't sell the property. So they're still there. They no, they've it. sold it since about 10 years ago. But that's why there are two cutouts in 30 Rock on 6th Avenue, one on the left and one on the right, because they wouldn't sell the properties. Right. Well, that's interesting. Well, the same thing happened with uh, that bar that Woody Allen used to play in. Michael's Pub. Michael's Pl Pub, I yeah. think. He, they refused to move, and they had to build the building, literally. The around it. Paper, around well, that's it. what happened with B.J. Clark's, too. Or P.J. Clark's. That's the one I'm yeah. thinking of. They yes. had to literally build the building. Build the building around. Around There's a the notch in the building all the way to the top. But the same thing at 30 Rock. But Hurley's used to have a four-digit NBC extension because everyone was down there drinking. And when you needed someone, you would just dial whatever oh, yeah, the no. number was. <laughs> what would happen was there was a, I often used to say NBC, I think maybe it was also true at well, CBS, there may have been a bar across the street. But everyone, NBC had this bar right downstairs called Hurley's. And what what happened is they had these booth announcers in those days. All the announcers were down there yeah, getting well, the drunk. booth announcers. And this is this is a complete job, okay? It's um, it's now well, nine ten fifty nine. They he go WNBC New York. WNBC New York, <laughs> and then that's it for another hour. 
<laughs> they only had to do a station break once an hour. So then they would have an hour to do something and they would go down to Hurley's and drink. And then they would come back up for, at, at midnight and go, WNBC, New York. And then they <laughs> and go back down to Hurley's. Well, I love to hear them because at the end of the day, when they used to literally sign off, the announcer had to do more than just go WNBC, New York. He had to go, we bring to an end another broadcasting <laughs> WNBC, New York. We hope you all have a pleasant evening and we'll see you tomorrow here at WNBC, New York. But the thing was, that was a little too much to have to say. And, <laughs> and it was always fun to hear the announcer. I'd always tune it in like three o'clock in the morning because they were drunk on their ass. <laughs> and, and then there are lots of stories of them at Grand Central Terminal passed out on the train platform waiting for their train back to Yonkers or wherever. Now, here's the worst part of it. These announcers, and I, I knew quite a few of them. One of them I knew was Fred Foy, who was the announcer Fred Foy. of Lone Ranger. But he, no, Fred he was, Foy was ABC. He was over at ABC, and every half hour, WABC New York, right? And then back to doing whether I'm not going to say that Fred was a drinker, but who knows? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so it's time now for the uh, for the negotiations for announcers at. Uh, the various stations. And I was working for one of those, I was working for WPLJ in New York, which is owned by ABC. And so they're out negotiating, right? And they finish their negotiations and guess what the FM announcers got as a raise? <laughs> what did the announcers who worked the booths make? About $200 more a week. Hmm. WNBC New York. <laughs> <laughs> As opposed and of course, to, you know what Fred Foy was most famous for? Uh, the uh, Dick Cavett show. Lone Ranger. Well, I said Lone Ranger earlier. Oh, you did say that. Yeah, okay. Yeah. In fact, I had... Well, he also, did, he also did Pyramid at one point. I had, really? I had Fred Foy on, along with who the guy who was my boss. I'm trying to remember his name right now at ABC at the time. And I had both of them on because one was the announcer on the Lone Ranger and one was the announcer on the Green Hornet. Oh. And we would talk about, we, he came in and we talked about both shows because you know, they were both the same show. And they were both out of Detroit. Yeah, they, they took Lone Ranger scripts and then just converted them to Green Hornet scripts. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, but they were, think about yeah, but you think know, about the Lone it. Ranger was related to the Green Hornet. Oh, well, he was the uh, great grandnephew of the Green nephew Hornet. or something. Of, of, yeah. the, of the Lone Ranger. And it's even, they even state that in one of the radio episodes when they're looking at a big picture of this guy on a horse or whatever. And he says, oh, that's your great granduncle, the Lone Ranger. Wow. But anyway, Green Hornet, Lone Ra the Green Hornet, the Lone Ranger, Cato Thomas. Black Beauty was the car, Silver was the horse, you know, and you can go <laughs> on and on. And all they had to do then was to take one script and change the words and change the wording and the town it's in and a few other little things. And you've got, you know, a Green Hornet episode. <laughs> but uh, I had both of them on and um, they, uh, you know, he was, he, uh, Fred Foy, I guess, was on that show forever. He did the radio shows for years. And then, yeah. then he became the announcer on the uh, Dick Cavett show. Yeah. And, uh, you know, one of, one of the all-time great announcers. And, and a lot of people knew his name, too, because they always, on some shows, he go, and this has been Fred Foy. You know, so. But anyway, they just did that damn station break, and they got 200 bucks more a week. And we're, we're the FM guys, but we're just kids, so they didn't care about us. Mm. Yeah. And I brought, I often brought that up to, to, to after my union saying, that's why I've always hated the union because they didn't represent us as they should have. Well, and, then you should have got out of our prescriptions. Well, after now I hate them because of the prescription deal. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I went back because they, because they, they took us off of their medical plan. I looked at my Number prescription 30, costs now for a certain product and it's $41. Uh, if I get it at Costco, it's 31 so that's where I buy it from mail order is Costco. 
That's my clue to everybody. Just forget about your insurance. On the other insurance, on the SAG-AFTRA. And, and, and last year, when we were on SAG-AFTRA, yeah. it was 10 bucks. So that's another, mm -hmm. that's another way they've screwed. They screwed at me several times in my life, and I'm still a member. That You quit, didn't you, Shaggy? I haven't paid my dues in a year now. Yeah, yeah. I, I stopped paying my dues because I don't have to pay dues any longer because I'm a senior member and they care about me. Yeah, fuck you. Yeah. Took away my health insurance, you motherfucker. <laughs> but they send you screeners of films you don't want to see. Oh, mm -hmm. this year I got screeners of all the stuff I watched on Netflix. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Usually, you know, we always look forward to getting screeners from the screen. We did, and we used to vote. Yeah, the best thing about after a, uh, uh, getting together with SAG as one union is we got started getting all these screeners, you know, and and it was movies that are in theaters now and that are not on DVD or whatever. And They're not, up for awards. Yeah, uh, but this year, everything that came was all TV. They were all TV stuff, hmm. you know. Um, so what have you? But that, that's my union, WABC New York. I never could figure out why those guys were making thousands a week for doing that. Although it would drive me crazy. They had a better union. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I don't I don't think that I think today it's actually nobody even says it anymore. I don't think. I don't think so. They just put up a slide that says WABC New York. See, it used to be that in broadcasting you had to do a station break every hour. And that came after the War of the Worlds. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, really? Was that the reason why? Yeah, yeah that, was a, that was it. Why? So, oh, oh, maybe it's every half hour then. Because people, War of the Worlds, the Orson Welles, was airing at the same time as the Bergen and McCarthy show. Mm -hmm. And people would tune into the Bergen and McCarthy show for the first 10 minutes and switch over. for the Charlie McCarthy segment. And then Nelson Eddy or whomever would sing, and then they flipped over to Orson Welles and didn't realize they were listening to a dramatic presentation of the War of the World. Right. And but thought that New Jersey was being but overrun. Was the second Earth. half, though, the second half of the, of the War of the Worlds broadcast is a dramatic thing between two people in a cave somewhere, if I remember. Well, halfway through, they did say something. Yeah. Let's say it had from eight to nine or whatever. Somewhere in the middle, they they did a cut in like this is a dramatization of H. G. Wells' War of the Worlds because yeah. they were getting phone calls of yeah. the Martians are invading. But they were also, that place they were was also doing at that point they were into a dramatic like two person thing between Wells. Yeah, you know the only two people left on Earth or whatever yeah, or something it was. like that. Yeah, <laughs> so it wasn't like the whole show was this thing. It was just the opening on it, you know. Well, the Martians for the first 20, 25 minutes decimated the world. Right. And it was the, if you were listening to Charlie McCarthy, you missed the part where Orson Welles at the beginning says this is a dramatization. Right. And it was it was the dead air during the broadcast that really freaked people out, right? Yeah, they never heard dead air on radio. Right. When you heard the announcers just go off. And you know, that's yeah, really I mean, it starts off with a dance band playing, and then yeah. right, uh, right, and the, you know, listening to the music of they, Raymond Ricardo or whatever. Here at the one of the greatest was, things, one of the greatest things ever. Somewhere Grove in New Jersey, yeah, yeah something and we're bringing right. you whatever that band was. Miller's Grove, something I'm trying to remember. Miller's Grove, Grover's yeah. Mill, Grover's Mill, Grover's Mill, Grover's Mill. Grover's Mill. Yeah. Yes, yes. One of the best yes. things ever is Orson Welles' fake apology about it. If you ever can see the video of that, I mean, he's so smug. I mean, he knows this is catapulting him to even greater fame. And <laughs> Mike, did you uh, when, I was, <clears throat> when I was a kid, I had a we had a TV moment of that. Maybe you guys can uh, shed a little light. But I was a little kid, and there was a TV show on. I think it was called the the day after or the day after yeah. tomorrow. The yeah. day after Jason Robards, the nuclear thing. Yeah. yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And and everybody thought that the the news reports on that was so real. And on the next day on the playground, everybody was very confused about that one. Yeah. So, but it was a drama, though. It wasn't, you know, it wasn't done. It wasn't done in like it was in real time. Right. But the kids didn't know that. Right. It did Not scare the shit. Right. I remember. Right. Right. Exactly. I remember because I was a teacher. We had an assembly the next day because kids were so freaked out by it. 
to well. explain that it wasn't real, a nuclear threat was real. This was a you know a movie, a speculative movie. Wait, so, but you uh, were telling kids a nuclear threat wasn't real? No, no, we told them that it was the threat was real, but the movie was you know, okay. Yeah. Not, didn't happen. You know? yeah. Did anyone else watch the Ernest Hemingway documentary on PBS? That yeah, was great. I it. thought it was great. I thought it was terrific. Um, he was a jerk. <laughs> it was he a was jerk, but was a great, you know, so many great artists are. There, there were moments in his life where he wasn't exactly a jerk. I mean, right. I, I right. mentioned to Marjorie as we were watching it, gee, it's kind of nice to do that. Yeah. You know, I have one he, question. Yeah. Remember when they showed that NBC interview when he was really out of it and he was reading and he was re even reading the punctuation? Was that, yeah. when he, he, a period. Yeah. Did, did period. That really, yeah. Was that on the air? Yeah. Yeah. What happened was he had all the questions. He didn't like doing interviews, if you noticed, in that whole, this, uh, in that whole uh, documentary. You never even really hear his voice until the end. You know, until the very end. This one interview that he granted NBC, right. and he wanted the questions in advance, and then he had them all written out on cue cards. The answer. The because answer. he was so messed up at that time. And then time. The, the guy would ask the question, and then he would answer it. And at the end of it, he would go, "Period." Comma, yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and that was sad. Yeah. And then, then he went off camera and he read something and it sounded normal. Yeah. He didn't, yeah. Uh, but in his part. 20s, he was hot. He was good looking. He was movie star good looking. Man. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. If he were alive today, yes. Would, would he be a right winger? <laughs> no. Huh? He'd have a show on Fox. No, he wouldn't. Got it. <laughs> he was he was a libertarian for sure. <laughs> uh, libertarian maybe, but I mean, would he have voted for Trump? No, no. He would have hated Trump. I think he would have hated Trump, but he was a he was a, a no government guy. He he wanted less government. Right. Yeah. They they made that pretty clear in the. But document. he never got involved in politics, did he? Much at all? No. I don't think that. Document. Well, he lost yeah. all his property in Cuba when Castro right. came in. Right. He lost everything. Even right. though he supported Castro during the struggle. Correct. I think a lot of people did, though. Even here in America, he when, when Castro took over in Cuba, first thing he did was head to the United States to meet with, go to the UN and to meet with American politicians. And when he came here, he stayed in Harlem. Right. And I remember the pictures of people outside the hotel just cheering him. And then I think... Did he ever go on the Ed Sullivan show? I seem to remember that. I don't think so. That he was so, in the audience or something. Say that. And and uh, I mean that or, or so, so, You're in our audience tonight. It's Fidel either, Castro. Either, Stand up and take a bow. Either <laughs> that, or he said something like, "We want to welcome Fidel Castro to the city." I mean, he was he was welcome with open arms. Yeah, you well, you still have how many college kids with posters of Che and T-shirts of Che? Well, they don't really understand it. I don't think. Well, they but, didn't understand Che. I no. mean, Che in the end was a pretty terrible person. He was a brutal person. Yeah, I read this person. massive I mean, biography of him. They, and you, they say, oh, well, you know, um, Castro's a killer. Uh, che was because a killer. He, he killed all these people. And I'm going, not really. That was Che doing that. If that you didn't was, agree with Che or if you argued with him, you were on your knees with a pistol against your forehead and you were shot. Well, who was Che? I Che, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 I saw a, a vegan kid with a shirt that looked just like Che Guevara, but with with a, a cow's head. And I said, what's that? She says, it's a bovine revolution. <laughs> <laughs> I thought that was pretty funny. Yeah, but I mean, I mean, it, it was, uh, Che was not, uh, when I see the t-shirts, I go, eh, he wasn't. Yeah, that is I mean, I, 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 I believed in that revolution. I mean, uh, Batista was just the worst. You know, he was the dictator of Cuba right. and he was just horrible in fact here you know who does a perfect impression of, uh, of, of Batista Edward Berger does a perfect impression <laughs> Batista <laughs> yeah just uh, uh, yeah just to say uh, viva la Cuba viva la Cuba <laughs> <laughs> and that is and then we would play Batista as a mouse I think a little uh, yeah that would be good that would yeah. be good <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> I thought I'd bring you into it, Edward, since you've been quiet all hour. Oh, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> I am a professional. I know what to do. <laughs> <laughs> Checking. 
<laughs> right? He should work cartoons, right? You've got to be a movie star now to work cartoons. Oh, yeah, that's right. <laughs> well, then we got to make him a movie star first. Change, we'll change get... your name to Edward Pitt. Okay. <laughs> you know, that's what I hate about animated films. I, I, what I used to love about animated films, you would go to them and you would watch Cinderella and you got into Cinderella and you believed the mice and so on. And you weren't distracted by what is now the distraction. Whose voice is that? Oh, it's Brad Pitt. Yes. Oh, okay. And then when they're advertising the film, uh, it's blah, 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 uh, with the voices of Brad Pitt, blah, 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 blah. And they make a big deal out of these voices. And it just go, you know, animated films, the voices are something that should just be in the background and nobody knows who they are. Right. And in who the started days, that? Huh? Who started that? Was it James Earl Jones and Lion King? No, Disney. Disney in the late 50s into the 60s started to use more name voices rather than the, let's just throw out a name, Eleanor Audley, who was doing a voice in, I think, Cinderella or, or something. Or Mel Blanc or June Foray. Right, right. So the first one I can think of is James Earl Jones in Lion King. In Lion King. But you had quite a few other actors in that film, too. But James Earl Jones, who I love and adore, he was not a major star. He just had a great voice. Right. right. Wasn't right. A if he didn't have a great, would he have done the, the, the CNN if he had a real career? He was a Broadway star. Mm. Yeah. Was a Broadway star with a great voice. And a great was white hope. And a great Aladdin, white hope. Was yeah. Aladdin before Lion King? I thought Aladdin was after. Okay, no, so Robin Williams would have been, yeah. yeah that Robin was Williams was probably the first real identifiable actor. Yeah. You know, um, because uh, I was checking, even in those Disney films during the 60s, I mean, we had things like, or in the 50s, we had Lady and the Tramp and things like that. And the voices. No, were, they were names I know, but you might, right. you would know, but not the rest of the panel. But like, for instance, if I said the name Bill Thompson, you wouldn't know who I was talking about. Bill Droopy Thompson, Dog. Droopy yeah. Dog, for one. <laughs> but then he also did Disney films and so on. You know. um, so, no, but you'd have Ed Wynn and, you know, again, not, quote, major, major stars. They were right. doing the Disney stuff yeah, at Wynn, that era. Wynn, Wynn played the um, Mad Hatter. Right. In, uh, yeah. in, or you'd have, you know, would have those kind of people, but not let's say Brad Pitt, Robin Williams, you know. Yeah. Even even network cartoons, right? You'd have people like Don Adams and Wally Cox, but you know, not me. Right. They weren't stars. No, they weren't stars, right, exactly. Well, they were stars on television. No, Don Adams was not a star when he was doing those cartoons. Right. He right. was on the Steve Allen show right. and was picking up extra bucks doing cartoon voices. Oh, yeah. That mm -hmm. was before Get Smart, yeah. And what did he really do after Get Smart? And I have not, I have nothing against Don Adams. Oh, I love Wasn't he Inspector oh. Gadget? Yes, he was Inspector yeah. Gadget. Yeah, but again, yeah. what in his career made him quote? Can we call it a superstar? Nothing. I don't think he was ever a superstar. Oh, yeah. no. he show uh, screen test. He was a working actor. Right. Remember that in the seventies, Don Adams screen test. Yeah, yeah. Adams. that was really popular. I vaguely remember that show. The fact that you remember it is, is a, I think, <laughs> phenomenal. Well, it's old guys, you know. Oh, but Adams understand. was a New York voice actor yeah. at that period. Yeah. That's all. Marjorie hasn't said it. It was Wally Cox. Of the papers, what did Wally Cox do in his career? The incredible Mr. Limpet. Yeah. Uh, uh, no. That was, um, what's his name? That, that wasn't was, Wally Cox. Uh, it was um, Don Knotts. Uh, uh, Don, oh, Don Knotts, right. Sorry. You're, you're Wally right. Cox, what else was he famous for? He did Mr. Peepers. Mr. Peepers. No, he did Marlon Brando. He did Marlon Brando. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> but other than Mr. Peepers, which was 1950 to 53, maybe. Yeah. Oh, wow. Hollywood Square. And the worst, the, supposedly the Wally, worst panelist in the history of what's my line, yeah. Wally Cox. <laughs> Wally Cox was reportedly in the Hollywood Square. Uh, uh, reportedly, at one point, the boyfriend of Marlon Brando. Wow. <laughs> well, they now, lived. They lived in the two same apartment. people side by side, and you wonder why. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, well, why? I, I can't believe that. 
Uh, I mean, but Marlon Brando was a gay icon at that time. Could have well, had they anybody he apartment. wanted. So what? I'm not going to right. tell you I, what might have. I can believe Cary Grant and Alan Ladd before I believe. <laughs> well, actually, yeah, it wasn't, it wasn't No, Cary it wasn't Grant. Alan Ladd. It was, it was Randall Scott. Randall Scott. Randall Scott. Randall Scott. Randall. And Cary Grant? Yeah, and Cary Grant. Uh, lived together. And Randall wow. Scott. And Randall Scott lived together. Uh, <laughs> Somebody, uh, yeah. the greatest, greatest story about, and then we got to go, the greatest story about, uh, about Cary Grant was the time that uh, he got a uh, telegram from somebody, a reporter who wanted to know something, and he wrote, and, you know, they always truncated things in, in, in telegrams. It said, how old Cary Grant? And he telegrammed back, old Cary Grant, fine. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyway, great. hey, listen, we've kind of run out of time here. Boy, this is so nice. God, I love this this group. I just uh, uh, love you to death. I mean, it's it's uh, it's great. And I want to thank uh, Shecky, and I want to thank Edward Berger, and I want to thank Mike Chisholm, and I want to thank Andrew Deutsch, and I want to thank Scott Boddicker, Steve Bender, uh, Marjorie Miller, um, the famous Marjorie Miller. Uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, Lynn LaFrisco for all being here today. Uh, hopefully we'll see you all again next week. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Alex. Thanks, gal. Have a good and, weekend. Oh, oh, and don't forget uh, Mandy. We have Mandy on today. Mandy. <laughs> so st thank you, Mandy.